The 365 MFA token theft is just everywhere at the moment. We know a lot of people that get hit with it. And unfortunately, this is one of Microsoft's screw up. And it seems to be everywhere. and means that anyone with 365 can be hacked until they bring this new technology out. Mally from one of our MSP partners from 3GI is just going to walk us through the highs and the lows of dealing with the 365 MFA token theft issue. The 365 MFA token theft uh, seems to be all of the rage at the moment. And for me, it's caught Microsoft by surprise. Uh, within one of the MSPs that we work with, Mally here works with 3GI, um, it's very uncommon to have um, attacks if you've got everything done correctly and you've kind of done the basics for your whole environment and no vulnerabilities and things encrypted and all of that good stuff. But Mally, this one's kind of taken people by surprise. So can you just try and explain to me what it is just so I can understand it as a piece of tech? So, of course, I'll be coming from a slightly technical point of view, but effectively, this is uh, the classic sort of, um, please click this link or go to this website, sort of, uh, you know, receive an email mm -hmm. from awesome from social media it happens as well. Um, and the link could be a real link, but what will happen is it'll, there might be a secondary link or somewhere along the way where they'll go, oh, um, are you signed into any other services, in this case, specifically Microsoft? And then it will then, because you're, if you've got another tab open or it's just got a saved credentials from your last sign in from your uh, emails or anything teams or anything similar to like that what will happen is they will actually take that token and because it's already authenticated and they'll use that to sign into your account so obviously this this is quite targeted because they need to already know what your email address is or who you are you know some vague basic details it's not just uh random, you know, I'm just going to try this mask because they need to have some details already so it's usually yep, quite targeted. Yep. But then they'll use that token, authenticate to an, uh, technically as far as Microsoft can see, an already MSA. So just, just to stop you there. So I understand how all authentication will use some kind of bearer token effectively, yes. right? And that would be sort of copied locally to the machine in some form of cash. Mm -hmm. So it basically means that people are able to grab that token from your machine then use it somewhere else to fool Microsoft into thinking that you're okay to access. It's already approved this bearer token. You're just stealing that session almost to be able to go and cause some Correct. havoc or something. So this is why you need some details previously. So yeah, you'll have a couple of couple of tokens. This one is you've got every you've got a, you've got an email address already. Yep. Right, and then the this token is just for the you effectively bypassing password because you've already put it in. You've already MFA. Yep. Yep. This session already, and what they'll do is then they can then use this and it will show up in the sign-in logs as well. They'll then use this to then log into your emails, log into your Outlook. There's no, you know, um, and what Microsoft has tried to do here is, and this has only just come out, it's very much a new technology, it's in preview currently. They will, they're, they're currently tying that token to one device. So, Let's say I've your, your laptop here, mm -hmm. you sign in with yourself. I get it. So it basically ties it to a device ID. It, so ties, it ties it to your hardware ID. Yes. Effectively. So right. they, if that token can no longer be used with another device, it just does not match yours okay. anymore. So I'm going to ask a stupid question here. Apologies. Um, this feels fairly remedial from a security perspective to be able to best. Like we, we I know that we've seen it because we've had people writing in and telling us about it as well. Mm. So all the raging Reddit. Uh, is this like, where has this come from? And I assume that this is just a skeleton in Microsoft's closet. Like this is, you know, stealing tokens is not a new thing, but for it's them to be not. able to do it as 365, feels like Microsoft have screwed something up here. So Microsoft actually already had some, like this is not, it's not new. It's just being used a lot more. Um, so Microsoft have already had some protections in place where certain tokens expire automatically. You cannot set the expiry date. This is set by Microsoft Fence. Okay. So there's okay. a 24 hour one and then there's a 30 day one, there's a 90 day, depending on what you're yep. signing into. Yep. And it will automatically expire there. So what, so again, so the token they're grabbing, it's not just the authentication token. Mm. They're actually grabbing, um, depending on what browser you're using, the, the refresh token. So they can, yep. Yep. so every 24 hours, you can get another bearer token by using the token refresh. Yep. This matches. Please give me a fresh one that is authenticated. Um, I mean, I, I can obsess about the fact that Microsoft shouldn't have fallen foul to this, to the cows come on. They are an amazing security vendor, and we genuinely believe one of the best, or becoming one of the best security vendors on the planet. But um, the new tech that they've got, and James, uh, a CEO, said to me that he believes that um, 
uh, the tech is still a little bit finicky. Like they haven't nailed this yet. Where is it at the moment? 100%. So as I mentioned initially, it's very much in preview. Um, currently, it only affects exchange and SharePoint sign-ins. This is just due to the sort of like uh, the relationship between the application yep. and the device. Mm-hmm. It, it only supports Windows, does not support any other platforms at this point in time. So you okay. have to be a Windows device, has to be right. attempt to sign into emails or has to be t- attempt to sign into SharePoint. It's one would assume the same authent- authentication token issue could happen on a Mac as well. It's almost Correct. Like browser so that's based. still technically vulnerable. Um, mm-hmm. Microsoft probably hasn't quite, probably due to especially in the new Macs with their new chips, um, how exactly they will bind that token. So obviously Microsoft has access to Windows and their yep. services. They can yep. sort of easily engineer that. And it does seem to work. It, this has some limitations as well. Again, with the binding of the, that token to that device, it has some uh, some some knock-on effects where things like if you're signing into multiple mailboxes with credentials, yep. that's yep. not just yours, the first one effectively, it, will, it has issues there. So right, you need to okay. be using the proper delegated access for you know best practice so effectively kind of what you can be doing in the meantime is yeah. just stricken up all of your general micro like the conditional access kind of the general sort of what we see in 365 secure store so what is the protections until microsoft doesn't sort their life out with tying it to the device id is probably so the question i found that the best thing to actually do is one you need to already have yes a conditional access policy mm-hmm. but what's actually very good is one of two things it has the both high impact mm-hmm. They're like, you know, 90% of the protection there. One is a country block list mm. because it doesn't matter if they've got the refresh token. If they're not in a country, right, okay, sign yep. in. That's a good one. It just won't, mm. can't sign in at all. Yep. And the second one is actually a robust identity protection policy. So this is going to be slightly separate. It does have options in conditional access, but it's actually in the identity section in enter ID. Yep. And that what this does evaluates all the sign-in locations because yep. what happens is Microsoft can see that the sign-in location it's is changed. different. Yeah, okay. However, if you don't have identity protection turned on, it won't action anything. So this will say you're signing to UK and now you're signing in from Scotland, yeah, yeah. 10 minutes apart. It will consider that impossible travel. Yep. Right? And then it will, and depending on how- Which is a known 3G, uh, sorry, um, um, 365 sort of maxim in terms of like, there's no way you correct, can travel. But a lot yeah. of people don't configure this because it causes, you need to have a relatively basic process of, okay, um, someone's travelled, or yep. they're using a VPN at home, yep, but they yep. use it for something personal. Right, so that's how people can jump space and time Correct. distances of VPN. Correct. Yeah, yeah. So some some people at home personally use that for you know whatever they need to use it for, and mm-hmm. that will affect that, of course. And then you need to have just as an organisation a way to say, okay, this person it's been blocked notification. Okay, who remediates it? What the time frame? So maybe yep. you know, okay. that sort of thing. So, but once you've got it in place, it's relatively straightforward. It's a little basic process for that. Identity protection is probably the most right. efficient so way currently it would, to block that. Until, so basically what's coming, just to replay all of that back for everyone. So there is tech, which I assume will be within the 365 price, right? They're not yep, going to add yep. another. It's, uh, it's the up, right? basic premium P1 license. Comes with your business premium. Right, okay, good. Business premium, not on standard? So you'd still- Not on standard. Wow. You need business premium for that, yeah. Right, okay, interesting. So, I mean, I'd be really interested to see how this develops. If Microsoft realised that this is a screw, we might have to fact check ourselves on this, but if Microsoft are intending this to be for the more expensive licence, I'd be very surprised given the fact that this is a screw up on their end. But we know with Microsoft, they will try their luck and then sort of rescind yeah, back yeah. to the sort of cheaper. Um, there uh, is a standalone option as well. You can just get a separate licence for this for the, again, the Enter ID. Wow, P1. okay. It's been around for, it's not been new, it's been yep. around for a little bit. But, uh, but they this particular fix, it. you think is going to be part, yeah, part I, yeah, of that. Okay. Yeah, correct. Could argue that might be a little bit naughty for them to do that. Should Sounds like it should be something that's ubiquitous for everyone. Because it is people are being hacked with this. We, I've had five or six stories of people that have wrote to me um, separately um, and it feels like this is something that Microsoft have definitely got caught short on. And the last thing is just the advice that from always come from, we're lucky we get to spend a lot of time with the GCHQ here in the UK. It's kind of eat your vegetables in the sense of set stuff up correctly, correct. right? So yeah. if you're, this is where we're in a world where AI is becoming a lot more sophisticated for the bad guys. So security by obscurity just isn't really an option anymore and making sure that things are set up correctly. And it is all in that Microsoft 365 secure score, right? It, it's Boringly so, it's a lot of work to do, but that's kind of what you need to do to protect yourself. Yeah, it's, in this it's just understanding what exactly, I mean, there's always the uh, sort of situation where you don't know what you don't know, mm-hmm. but almost everything that you need to sort of protect your environment is probably in 365 which is finding it and yep. configuring it yep okay and that's why we have wonderful products like robo shadow to help people um out with that so okay mally thank you very much for running us thank through you, with that